Hey everybody, David Chang here and welcome to The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really glad you can join us today. And today's guest I have is Steve Connell and I'm very excited to have him on the show. And Steve was one of the top mutual fund managers in the world with American Group, uh, also known as Capital Group. Many of you may have invested in their funds and we'll talk a little bit about it, but he's a guy who in the late 70s bought 20% of Samsung with his fund. So that's, uh, he was able to definitely think smart and make successful decisions. So today we'll be talking about seven traits that he sees on what people can do to become more successful and smart. So Steve, thank you very much for coming to the show. It's Appreciate a pleasure it. to be here. Dude. Yeah. yeah, I always so, enjoy being here. So I, I always love that story. I, I tell people about it. Let's talk about the Samsung and, and, and what, what was going on at the time now besides, unfortunately, the Note 7 issue. I still love the, the Galaxies, and, and Samsung is one of my favorite companies. But, but back in the 1997 Asian financial crisis, uh, when everybody was trying to get away from it, you decided, hey, let's go all in. Now, tell us a little bit about that. I think it's a fascinating well, story. Well, it was a unique period. Um, Samsung now is a $200 billion company. Back then, it was a $10 billion company. Mm. And back then, everybody thought they made memory chips, commodity memory chips like Samsung. Um, but they actually made much more customized things with higher value. And so the way that I really discovered this was visiting with the management, visiting mm. the company. So uh, it's important as an analyst to get to know a company in depth. And so spending time with the management in Korea mm. uh, was really what opened my eyes to the changes that they were making. They had reduced their headcount by 50%. <clears throat> their turnover had imp improved twofold. Mm. And a lot of people don't know this, but Jack Welch from GE, where I used to work, right. was heavily involved in the restructuring of Samsung in oh, the late 90s. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And I always ask, uh, questions, um, you know, um, never be afraid to ask a stupid question. Mm -hmm. So when we were talking to the manager of Samsung, he said, we're involved in a process of workout. And I said to him, and I, when I worked at GE, workout was a very specific term from Jack Welch, which okay. he used to restructure the company. Okay. It involved getting managers, putting them on stage so they couldn't see who worked for them, and having them criticize their manager. Right? Interesting. Right. So this is called workout. The, Jack Welch okay. called that workout. Okay. And so the, the, the CEO of Samsung Electronics said to me, we've been involved in a process of workout. Okay. And I stopped. I said, do you know Jack Welch? And he said, yes, he is helping us restructure the company. Mm. Right. So Jack Welch would go to, uh, when he went to Asia, he would stop at Samsung on his way. Okay. And um, he helped them through their restructuring process, which took them from a $10 billion company to a $200 billion. Company. What was the purpose of, okay, so I, I know Korea especially has a very, uh, <laughs> what they call, the, in the book Malcolm Gladwell talks about a high uh, power index ratio where yes. hierarchy is extremely important. So here was the uh, subordinates being able to openly uh, 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 voice their concerns to management. Is that is that what it was? That's a great question, David. And, uh, and uh, when we went down the escalator for lunch, right. there were maybe 100 people on the floor. And sure. they all went, <laughs> oh, wow, okay. on the ground, on their knees. Okay, got right? it, got it. And so you would think a culture like that would not be innovative right. and not be free thinking. But that's not true. Mm. Samsung, I, I think it has to do with loyalty. Okay. The Koreans during the financial crisis, the Asian financial crisis, right, right. 1997, they would take their jewelry. Oh, you're Korean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, right, right. So I know about this. Yes. They would take their jewelry right. to the government and melt it down to, to help the gold, pay for the right. debt. Yeah, right. Right. So you, you have this hierarchy, which you mentioned, but you have this intense loyalty to the company. Mm. Every morning, 8 a.m., employees stand up and uh, say the Samsung national anthem. It really interesting. There's the Samsung okay. anthem plays, oh, got, got it. and they okay. stand, stand at attention, 8 wow. a.m., 8 a.m., don't be late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. So Samsung is the most, I mean, I've seen thousands of companies. Sure. Samsung is the company that is, is the most nimble giant that I've ever seen. And really? I, and I don't know how they do that. Okay. And I don't know if they can continue to do it because uh, they're under new management now, right? Okay. The, the, uh, the founder of Samsung had a stroke. Right. And he's now turning the company over to oh, So this his is son. The, the founder gave it to his third son and the third son had the stroke and now it's going to the third generation. No, I think the... Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, the, got it. 
So yes, yeah. You know more about it. Than <laughs> oh, right. the, the leader of Samsung yes. has had a stroke. Right, right. Okay, got it. Right. So that that's interesting. And 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 in your so in 1997, you're thinking, okay, this is a great opportunity. Uh, um, so you're managing this fund, and you decided, hey, let's do this. Um, and and <clears throat> when you were doing that, how? I mean, owning such a large chunk of that company, I'm sure they they really were catering to you. You're right. They came to us at Capital when we owned 20%. Sure. And um, I, w I actually helped them restructure the company because they would come and visit Tokyo, where I was. Okay. Once a month. Okay. Right. right. Show us the plan, get our ideas. Right. So one of the things that happens when you're, when you're a big investor like that right. is you can kind of, you know, there's nothing, no easier way to predict the future than to determine the future. Sure, right? sure. So if, if you actually work with company mm. um, so we worked with them to help them improve uh, to help them restructure which which did part of this now and, and actually I, yeah. I, I suggested and and had appointed the first right. the first outside board member okay Samsung electronics was selected by me, me when I was really child. okay yeah. who was that uh, he was a guy from Applied Materials. Okay, right. okay, got it. Yeah. Now, I know we had the seven things that we want to talk about, but uh, I, I love the Samsung story. Well, what, is, what would you say is the one thing that, that led to Samsung's success from 10 to 200 billion? Uh, you talked about Jack Welch. There's a lot of things. What would you say is probably that one most important thing? Customer service. Customer service, okay. Yeah. So even I had the Note 7, and they, you know, returned exactly. it quickly. It's a great example. Right, right. They would make uh, what's called dynamic random access memory, DRAM. Okay. So when you look at your phone and you see the, no the latest DDR3, that's, sure. that's what they made. And uh, their policy was if a customer brought it back, no questions asked. Now, I don't know how well that's going to work at the <laughs> consumer space sure, in sure. America. Right, but, right. Um, they would, it would no questions asked, and they would, they would cater to everything the customer want, wanted. Got it. So what happened was there was a, what's called a legacy uh, product. Everyone would move, Micron, everyone else, Toshiba, would move to the next generation. Right. Well, Samsung's customers, when, when in the late 90s, the telecom boom started to happen. Right. And when you use memory for telecom servers, right. um, those servers have a 20-year life. Okay. Not a three-year life. Okay, okay. So they needed to replace or add to the memory yeah. of something that was going to... So they needed to use technology that was five years old, 10 years old, 20 years uh -huh. old. So this was called extended data out, EDO, DRAM, okay. before the DDR. Okay. And they said, can you make this for us? And yeah. Samsung said yes. Everybody else said no. Samsung made a billion dollars in 1999 uh, making a product that everybody else phased out of because it. their customers asked them for it. Interesting. Okay, right? okay. So it's really a highly customer service oriented company. And it's that which nimbleness is, you're talking about. It's nimble, okay. which is unusual for a company that makes commodities. Sure. Because a commodity is a commodity, but they turn a commodity into a proprietary product by wrapping their customer service around it. And so this is probably where BlackBerry failed because they didn't respond to client needs. Uh, I think they were a little late to the show. Well, they had Steve Jobs to go against. That's a little... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so <laughs> Samsung though, but Samsung did well. And Samsung did very right. well adopting Android, which I was see. which was a knockoff mm, from Apple, Apple, right? Which Steve Jobs was very upset right. about. Yeah, of course. Right. Now, now uh, uh, before we get into your seven points, uh, Apple versus Samsung. What what is your kind of? Uh, you know, they still work, they still need each other, right? It's a great point. Uh, but, uh, yep. you know, there's lawsuits against each other. What Not anymore. Gonna happen? Okay, so the lawsuits are gone yeah, now? Yeah, that was Steve Jobs' ego. Okay, okay, okay. I guess I can say that now. Yeah, that he's yeah, not yeah, around. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so Steve Jobs was great at creating uh, things that did not have a lot of uh, protective, competitive protection, uh, competitive mode around them. In okay. other words, he, he was the first one to make a pink computer. Sure, right? sure. Well, anybody can do that, yeah. but he did it first. Right. So he was always making things first. Got it. And, and, but they weren't things that had sustainable competitive advantage. You couldn't right. patent that. Right. Right. So this is how Apple came to have tremendous value, is that you had a guy who kept innovating. Mm -hmm. Right. And now that innovation, frankly, is, is gone. I, I, right. And so right. that's why stock price has been kind of flat, right? But back to your question about Samsung. Yeah. So um, Samsung made all the memory for Apple, mm -hmm. right? 
And the processors, Samsung started doing subcontracting, and Apple was a key. I think they actually had their processors made there. Got it. Are they still doing Taiwan that Sem for Apple? Or? I think they're splitting it now with okay. Taiwan Semiconductor, TSMC. Okay. Right, right, right. But Samsung used to talk about going into this subcontracting business. Right. And you've, you've hit on why the subcontracting business is difficult, because if you're doing subcontracting for a customer, right. then you can compete against that customer. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very thin line. You have to trust the people you're doing with. Right. Them. Now, what happened when Steve Jobs got very upset about a couple things. Number one, he got upset that Android was a knockoff. Sure. Right? And he got very upset at, at, at Samsung. Got it. Basically take, using this knockoff to become the leading And be, you making no phones. And right. Android being a Google product as well. So now you got right. the three companies. So there was kind of Google and Samsung teamed up against Apple. Apple so, you, so, you, so you had this. Uh, so Steve Jobs, very upset about it, uh, went to court to sue them. Now it's a, you know, it's a Billion dollar lawsuit. Sure. Now, when you have a company that like Apple that's worth five hundred billion dollars, right. what's a billion? Should sure. you really be spending your time doing that? But again, this was Steve Jobs' person. Got it. Got play. it. Well, well, that's I will love talking about that story. I'm yeah. sure we could do an entire show on it. But uh, today we're going to talk about the seven traits that you've seen through your experiences being, you know, fund manager of the year, running your own firm now, uh, of of being smart and successful and always I ask the guests what is your definition of success mm -hmm. and what is your definition of what it means to be smart okay well success is happiness okay all really. right all right now happiness depends on the person sure so whatever I say is probably gonna vary right depending on the person but I was thinking because David asked me you know I'll let it out he, he asked me this question last night. <laughs> so I mean happiness is is freedom health and love for you for me. Got it. Right. I see. Okay. And as I look at most people, I think right. it has some element of those three. I, I agree. You can you can be uh, in in love. Okay. And if you and if you're about to die the next day because you're not healthy. Okay. Then, then you haven't then. succeeded. I see. Right. Okay. Or if you're uh, in love and you and you are healthy. Right. But you have no money. Right. And you're living on the street. Mm -hmm. Then so I think some element of those three things. God. Uh, has has to do. So, I mean, you think uh, you see animals, the worst thing that can happen to an animal is to become excommunicated from the community, mm -hmm. be ostracized. Got it. Right? So, a lot of definitions of success, happiness, don't say anything about the people that we're connected to, but that's actually a huge part of it. Mm. In fact, part of the great joy of being at, at, at the Capital Group was the recognition of my peers. Mm, mm, mm. Right. Whether Got there's it. money involved or not, right. recognition of peers that you respect Got is a it. huge part of success, I wow. think. Um, so what I've gone through, I've, I've thought about seven. Oh, the other point is, um, what's successful for a, a, a money manager is a little different from what I would rather concentrate on, is that su success, su the, the wealth building of a person. Got it. And, and that we're involves gonna do budgeting. Got things it. like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break and then come right back and we'll get into your seven points. Okay. And so we look forward to uh, seeing you right back shortly okay. after this break. Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks. We have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha. Aloha. I am Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're with Steve Connell, who is uh, CEO of Diamond Head Advisors, and also when he was with the Capital Group, one of the largest mutual fund companies in the world, was recognized as one of the top mutual fund managers in the world, and uh, had a great success story uh, with Samsung. And today, we're talking about the seven points of what he sees as uh, as success and being smart. So let's talk about what is it uh, you've defined success as being uh, uh, having love, freedom, and health. What is your definition of smart? How, how is it that what what is it people that need to do to get to those things? And then right. we'll get to your seven points. Okay. Um, 
Well, you need to pick the right person to marry. Okay, so that's being smart. Okay, okay, that's important. <laughs> and you so. got to put that person to a test. Okay. You know, take them camping and forget your toothbrush, right? <laughs> see, see how they be, see how they respond. Oh, okay, okay. Right? Forget the sleeping bag. Oh, I see, I see. And have bears around. See how they respond, <laughs> right? And you'll come back with some different ideas. Be selfish when you're about to get married. I mean, part of being a, um, a living a happy life, is, I think, is giving and being generous. Right. But the one time you need to be selfish is I'm going to pick a mate for the rest of my life. Mm. Make sure it suits you. Okay, so that's a very good, very yeah. good point. So that's part of being smart is is making the right fit and right decisions of, of, of everything, not just including your well, mate. And, they, being, that's, and being selfish is not being, it's only for me, it's I'm going to make decisions that's right for my situation. Exactly. Got and it. eventually, if you haven't done what's good for you, it won't be good for the next thing. Got Self it. Self-interest, well understood. As sure, as sure. You know, Got um, it. So let, let's get to your first point. What is the first point, first trait that you see is, is important for being smart and being successful? So uh, let's concentrate on the wealth side. Okay. Okay, got it. It's a little bit nuts and bolts. Sure. Okay. So um, a friend of mine, Rob Reich at New York Life, he says the definition of wealth is spending less than you earn. Mm, mm, right. Mm. Definitely think about that. Yeah, right. Um, so this is not something that is pie in the sky. This is, everyone can be wealthy. Sure. I like to give the example of the man, he, he uh, died last year, who after the war he worked... Um, 30 years as a gas station attendant. Mm. He uh, retired, got bored in retirement, came back to work as a jan janitor for mm. 20 years. Mm. And when he died, he had a stock market portfolio of $8 million. Wow. Right. As a gas station attendant and janitor. That's right. Wow. Right. So anybody can do this. Sure. He lived within his means. Right. And so it's kind of, let's look at him. I, just, I should have checked his name. You can check his uh, name. Sure, sure. But, um, so one of the things he did, and this relates specifically to the stock market. Got it. And let, let's call this point one. Okay. Is don't listen to the TV. Sure. And let's, today let's buy this and sell that. And, you know, that'll drive you crazy. Sure. The reason that's what they do on TV is because that's what makes the ratings. Right, high, right. Right. When there's activity, right. something goes down dramatically, up dramatically. That makes news and people want to know the news. So they watch it. And that's how those companies make money. Got it. But that's not how you, it would be a show that no one would watch if you said, let's buy Google shares today and sit on them for 30 years. Right, right, exactly. Right? The so what Jim would they Kramer do on North, television? Yeah, right, day, right, right, exactly. But that's what you should do. Okay. Because that's the only way that you can take advantage of the compounding effect of Google growing 20% a year. Now, so now they give themselves a lot of shares. Your so first you get, point you get being 12. is thinking long term, not the Think short term. Think long term and when it comes specifically to stocks, buy something that's great. Okay. Right. You know it's a great company mm -hmm. and get the certificate, don't keep it in the broker account. Sure. And put it away in a vault. Got it. And leave it there. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. That's the so way you not invest money. To see it. Okay. Right. So what's your second point then? Second point is um, well, uh, second point is what I mentioned. Oh, okay. S spend less than you earn. Okay, your first point right. is, is, is uh, spend less than you earn. The second point yep. is think long term. Right. Okay, got it. And then your third point? Third point is live debt free. Okay. Okay. W and this is becoming easier today because interest rates are lower. Mm. And make no mistake about it, interest rates are permanently lower, mm. right? The days of earning 5% on a CD at the bank are over, and we're not going to see those again, mm. okay? Mm. So the days of earning 5% on risk-free money, right? we're not going to see that again, okay. right? Now, there are disadvantages to that. Sure. And one of those, one of the reasons that we've concentrated on preferred stocks is preferred stocks actually pay you 6% by going on a different part of the capital structure of the company. So in an environment of zero interest rates on risk-free money, preferred stocks are the way to go. Got it. Now, a lot of these are not being used by financial advisors. That's an aside. That okay. wasn't a seven, one of the seven Okay, points, got it, got it. Okay, right? so then... But in an environment of low rates, right. you can get a 15-year mortgage on your house rather than a 30-year mortgage okay. with not a lot of difference in your monthly payments. I but I'll see. tell you what, 15 years is very much within your horizon. Mm. 30 years is not. Got it. You can get your house paid off. Got it. Until your house is paid off, right. you don't own your house. Mm -hmm. The bank does. Mm, right. 
right. earlier. The, for, the third point being living debt free. Live debt free. Is important. So credit cards, consumer debt, uh, stay away from those. And, and Keep for, them paid off. For, for mortgage, try to go for a 15-year uh, uh, loan because the low interest rates make it reasonable for people to afford that. Very much so. Good. So right. what's the fourth one then? The fourth one is lease your car. Okay. Now, this Interesting. Is, a lot of people think otherwise is you should own your car, but you now you're saying lease your car. Lease your car. Okay. And and in an environment of low interest rates, right. leasing is you can get very low rates. Okay. Now, when you go into lease your car, it's a little complicated, but basically don't listen to what they say the interest rate is. Okay. Concentrate only on what the monthly payment's going to be and okay. how much money you have to put down. Okay. And if the monthly payment ends up being more, much more than $200, tell them, give me another car. Mm. Because what happens is when you lease a car, if you're going to own it for three years, right. the, the, le the leasing company predicts, they, they, you buy that car for three years out of a life of, let's say they think the car lasts for 12. Sure. So you only have to finance one third, right. uh, let's say nine years, okay. one third of the value of the car. Right. Why do, you want to why do you want to finance 100% of the value of the car when you can finance a third of it and oh, turn it in when you're done? Oh, interesting. Right? Okay. Now that works with an environment of low interest rates. And the key is, what is the residual value that the lessor uh, gives you when you return the car. Sure. And this varies dramatically. Right. So <clears throat> it makes a difference of a monthly payment of $700 right. or a monthly payment of $300. Got it. Same interest rate. Because if they say after three years when you turn it in, a uh, Mustang, I have right. a Mustang, okay. $38,000, they say, if they say when you turn that thing in, it's still going to be worth twenty-five thousand dollars right then you're financing a much smaller piece of it mm. than if they say your residual value is only going to be sixteen thousand dollars so everything in the leasing depends on what's the residual value that they give you when you lease the car God, so that's and interesting. Good, a simple way to do it yeah. is just say what's my monthly payment going to be got it because that in the end that's what tells the story so, okay. you can get a BMW right. today mm. for three hundred ninety dollars right a and so a lot of people who think you should own your car but you're saying because of low interest rate uh, and, and, and for me I've even made the argument with technology changing so rapidly I got into a bad car accident a few years ago and because oh. I had a more of a state-of-the-art car I uh, the safety ratings were Good higher point. that's a great point. And, and so uh, every year there's new standards coming out okay so then yeah. what would we say is a fifth point uh, of your seven points? set aside 20 percent of what you earn okay got it Right. right, and you can't do this unless the other point, which right, is to right. spend less than you earn. Right. So you need to set set aside a budget for yourself. Sure. That's key. No okay. matter how much money you make, who you are, sure. do that. Right. Sure. And then start to use that. And, and if you're living debt free, then you can start to invest in stocks that you're going to put away for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, paying off your, your mortgage, right, or buying another, maybe you want to go, would you, if you want to go into making investments, you have to do it with money that you don't need to pay for, you, for your living, Got everyday it. living expenses. Right? Got it. So Not to mention kids, you're probably Right, right. right. So, so living below your means and living below your means where 80% uh, is, is kind of your number where 20% right. of it's saved. That's right. Guy, what would you say the sixth point is? Sixth point and seventh point, um, you know, I was going to say on the marriage thing, we spend years studying in high school and college, and they never tell us the two most important things, which is, Pick the right mate mm, mm. and learn to distinguish the truth from a bunch of BS. Okay, okay, got okay? it, all right. So the, the other, this one is learn to distinguish the truth from a bunch of BS. And closely related that, to that is right. the seventh point, learn whom to trust. Okay, I see, okay, so. If you're going to go into business with someone, you better trust them. Ah. If you've just met them, chances are they're frauds. The extent of fraud in the American economy is very great indeed. And, and, and I know this from personal experience as well, where yes. I've been taken advantage of. And so, so if you want to expand upon that for the average person, because uh, we've got two points there, is if you're married or not married, uh, make sure that, that you find the right mate if you're not married. If you are and married, give him, a test. Uh, give him a test. And if you are married, you know, try to make sure that you're open, you communicate, that, that you're able to distinguish what the truth is from the BS. I think that's what you're talking about. And then the Works seventh, for marriage, too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, marriage too. and the seventh thing is about now learn knowing who to trust and not 
trust. Ruin the trust. And, and right. what would you say? Um, uh, and I've learned my lesson by yeah. by uh, by my <laughs> naivety of of trusting everything people tell me. Okay, got it. And then right. I would get into some bad business deals that I've learned my lesson from. For you, what have you found on 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 how do you distinguish that? If this if this deal is so good, right? What do you need me for? I see. Okay. Ask that question. Okay. If if this is so important, if this is so hot, I right. can't live without it, then why aren't you doing it yourself and why are you coming to me? I see. Okay. Almost nobody can answer that question. By the way, the, the U.S. criminal system is really set that there's a very high barrier to sit, sending someone to jail. Okay. So if you could do a lot of crap I and see. get away with it. Got it. Right? And it just gets too, too expensive to prosecute. So this is going back to our point that there's a lot of criminality everywhere. Sure. In, 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 and, and so you got to protect yourself because sure. the government can't do it for you. It's got right. It. And so back to the point. Right. Um, if it's so good, yeah. What do you need me for? And that's for investing in some sort of project, that type of thing. A deal, a company, whatever it is. If it, someone comes pitching something to you, right. If you're going to make that much money from it, right. Then what do you want my money for? Why do you want to share that with me? Why don't you just keep it all for yourself? Now, what that'll if, usually do it for you. Really? What if somebody says, "Well, I need to finance that." You know, uh, Apple needed uh, in the late set. Well, well, late seventies when Apple got started, he he borrowed I think quarter or million or half a million. Microsoft borrowed money, so. Uh, you know, Great Facebook, point. how would you distinguish the BS versus, because, you know, a venture capitalist, one out of 10 will win, and they understand that nine companies that they invest in will not take off. <clears throat> right. So how do you distinguish that BS from, which is just a risk that you take that's not going to work out, but it's not BS, yep. it just didn't work out? Yeah. If there's anything in the message that doesn't hold water, okay, run away. Okay. Got it. Got Even it. if it doesn't seem relevant. Sure. Okay. I'll give you an example. A guy came, he says, I own this house over here. And I checked with it. He didn't own the house over there. Oh, I see, I see. Right? Yeah, right. I know people that really didn't own that house. Yeah, yeah. You know? That guy got into a lot of trouble. I see. At years later. And you never would have expected it. Got it. So if anything in their story doesn't hold water, right. ask him about it. And if it doesn't make sense to you, right. run away. Okay. Another thing quite important. Listen to their language sure. and the way they write. Sure. Criminals use bad grammar oh. and bad language. Interesting. Right? And got if they it. start saying, I got, I'm going to make you uh, two Bs, yeah, 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 yeah. rather than saying two billion. Right, right. That's the way criminals talk. I see. Okay. That's so watch their language, watch their grammar, look at their spelling. A okay. lot of these people come from Nigeria, oh, whatever, I see. Those, accents. Oh, scam emails. Right? And if you get a phone call, Got it. what happens to these phone centers, yeah. people selling these things, right. is when you answer, it causes their phone to ring. Sure. So when you say hello and yeah. there's a delay, yeah. just hang up. I see. Got it. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, we've had a great show. There's so much to go. Uh, thank you for having Steve on the show. For more information on him, as well as some of the points he's talked about, you can go to artofthinkysmart.com. And I look forward to seeing you at our next show.